guys, welcome to Let's Make <laughs> Say. I am so excited for today's episode. We are going to have some honest conversation. It's going to be a lot of fun today. There's already been some great laughs, some great talks on the way here. So today's episode is going to get real. It's going to bless you. Um, I pray that it encourages you and that you'll share it with a friend. But go ahead and welcome yourself and welcome my guest today, Enoch, to What's What's They Say. I'm so glad to be here. I've heard a lot of great things. He said it's early, so so his voice is deeper. My voice is naturally like this. Oh, okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) If you meet him later and he's like, hi. My voice sounds like pop smoke. I'm like, (laughs) this is Enoch. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so good. But I asked him last minute and he said no at first. He swerved me and then he called me back like, 20 I felt minutes bad. Later. <laughs> you know how to make people feel bad. That's your gift. <laughs> and he said, never mind. I'll do it. It's going to be awesome. So yeah. thanks for coming, Enoch. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's do this thing. Well, um, Enoch and I, just so you guys know, we've been friends for a couple of years now. He also mm. went through the college and does some ministry stuff with us at Free Chapel. Um, so we're on the FC fam. And yep. we have a great friend group. And Enoch actually preached yesterday a little yeah. bit. And I... I thought to myself, I had someone back out. He just preached a great message, so he's already. I said he was <laughs> on his you. preaching bag, like he was like already in the vibe. <laughs> I so, was already in there. <laughs> yeah, he was already mentally and spiritually there. So I was like, dude, come on my podcast. It's gonna be awesome. So, um, like I said, Enoch's a great guy, and I wanted him to come and represent some guys, guy perspectives, and to just share his heart and share his personality, and for you guys to get to know him. So starting with all that, Enoch, why don't you go ahead and tell us your testimony in like a shortened version, kind of. A shortened version. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I would love to. I, um, first of all, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. And um, I come from a five-person household and with two immigrant parents, both from the Dominican Republic. So yes, I'm bilingual. Okay, and ladies. <laughs> <laughs> ladies. <laughs> and um yeah, I we lived in New York till I was about nine and then we moved here and that was a big shift and you know, it was a good shift though. Mm-hmm. You know, how to get accustomed to things. And I ended up I, I'm from Gwinnett, so went to high school at Grayson and you know, all throughout high school I uh, we, we had this household that was very strict, mm-hmm. and it was very, like, religious to a certain extent, and a rough family dynamic as far as, like, you know, some of us were heathens, some weren't. My parents were tripping. Yeah, I was a thug. I was not a thug. You were a thug. I'm the middle child, so I kind of <laughs> had to hold everyone together. I, I was the glue. But um, throughout high school, I kind of got to the place where I was living a double life, and I think at home my parents saw me as, like, this, like, you know, obedient and just like, you know, I would do anything they would need me to do and I would kind of just be the glue of the family while at school I was really trying to face these challenges of like, you know, in a way wanting to be seen, wanting to be appreciated because I felt like in a way I didn't have that at home. Mm -hmm. And so I played baseball for a little while, then that went left and I just found myself with the wrong crowd, found myself with the wrong group and honestly just doing the wrong things in a way trying to fill a void. And like I said, I was living a double life. And I just knew, like, that's not who I was, yet I was still living that life. And it just got to a place where um, I ended up going off to college, went to public university for a year. And I just knew it wasn't the thing to do, yet I still did it. And Mm -hmm. six months into college, I just had this moment with God where this was, like, after six months of, like, substance abuse, six months of, like, stealing, lying, deceiving, just... You know, all that you can think of, Mm -hmm. I was in there. And, yeah, that wasn't who I was, but I did it pretty well Mm -hmm. while living that double life of my parents thinking that I had it all together, that I was doing the right thing. And I just had this broken moment at God's feet where I was just, like, coming back like the prodigal son, just, like, running after him. And I was like, God, I don't know what's next. I don't even know if I should stay here, yet I just want to follow after you. And so, ironically, I ended up moving back home, which is funny because when I left— I told my parents I would never move back home. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of those talks with them. They were like, you know you're not supposed to go off to public university. You had the last couple of rough years in, in high school. Let's st- stay home and yeah. reestablish yourself. And I was like, nah, I'm out. And 
ironically, I come back home and I'm like, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> like that meme. I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I'm still living that double life. Yeah. I, I moved back home and I said yes to God in that way, yet there's still some areas in my life where I was just like, you know, still having substance abuse, still with the wrong crowd, still doing certain mm-hmm. things for the wrong reasons. And I had this season of going, um, I went to GGC, which is like the college at Gwinnett, and sometimes it seems like a ghost town, like there's not yeah. much like life there in a way, at least when I was there. And I really didn't have a friend group. It got to the point where I was still doing certain things, yet I didn't have the circle around me because I knew that's not what I needed, at least the circle that I had. Mm -hmm. And so I was home, and I just had this really lonely season. And I had this season where, in a way, I look back at it now, and I know that it was just me and God. Yeah. Yet I still was doing certain things that wasn't pleasing unto God or chasing after him. And so I remember just... I think it was Forward Conference 2019, which was the first that I had actually gone to. And there was, like, these certain sequence of, sequence of events that, like, just led up to the moment where I just, like, just said yes to God completely. Wow. And with that, there were just certain things where I had everything lined up to go back to college at mm-hmm. Georgia State. I was going to move to Atlanta and just do that, finish my business degree. Or... Free Chapel College, which ironically, like I said, with my parents, like two years prior, they're like, we think you should go to Free Chapel College. I'm like, ain't no way. That, <laughs> that is not a real college. I would never go there. Y'all are tripping. Two years later, I, I pull up on them and I'm like, I think I want to go to Free Chapel College. And they're just sitting back like, hmm, really? And it was just I one told of those you moments. So moments. <laughs> it was one of those moments. And they were, like, just seeing the transformation that I was having, yeah. whether I was seeing it myself or not. And it was just, like, really, like, terrifying. I remember just having my first day at Free Chapel College and having this fear because I knew what I was doing beforehand. I knew the last couple of years of my life, and I just felt like I didn't belong. Yeah, I felt like I wasn't worthy of having, like, healthy and strong community. And so the first couple of weeks there, I just felt like this, like, terrifying, like, just my heart was consistently, like, in this my This is when throat. I met Enoch, and this he is was when... <laughs> sitting by himself, and I was like, hey, I'm Bailey, you know, just, like, outgoing, whatever, and he's like, hi, and I was like, you want to come hang out with us? He said, I'm good, I'm going to chill here. I said, <laughs> okay, well, so nice to meet you. Yeah. And I said, I don't think he wants to be my friend. That is, <laughs> like, at that moment, I think it was more, and it, and it was really with everyone. I just felt like, in a way, I didn't belong. Yeah, I think way, it's overwhelming, too, for anybody. Yeah, and when you're coming from, like, a place of shame. Yeah. Really, like, even, like, a lonely season where you're not really, like, interacting with a lot of healthy individuals, you're just, like, you feel like people can see what you've been through, mm. and people can, like, sense that. And so that's really where I was, but after that, God completely redeemed and transformed so many things for me, and here I am. I work at Free Chapel now, and I preached a great word yesterday in a way I never thought God could ever use me. Like, even beforehand, I had this, like, little thought in my head where the enemy threw it in. It was like, you've done so much. Do you really think he could use you right now? Yeah. And, like, in that moment, I knew, like, just reflecting on the last couple of years, mm-hmm. how crazy and good God has been. And it's completely just, like, changed my life for the good. Wow. Yeah. Aww. That's a little short snippet. No, that's so good. It's all full circle. That's so good. I yeah. think that one of the things that you said um, in there that was good is that you were doing stuff that, like, you knew you weren't supposed to be doing, but you were doing it well. And I think that that was kind of we've all been there before where we know, we know in the deepest yeah. parts of us this is not who I am or who I want to be or who I'm called to be. Right. But I've gotten so, I guess, comfortable and acquaintance with this certain thing that I'm just gonna ride it out and you know those moments where you feel that check of you don't even have to feel like a terrible person but you just feel uncomfortable yeah because you can tell some people are doing stuff and that's just their vibe they're like yeah. totally in it they don't feel they do any type well. of yeah. <laughs> conviction <laughs> they just that's their thing and yeah. they're like no this is it this is where I feel comfortable mm-hmm. but when it's uncomfortable for you even if you're doing it well or you're hiding it well if something in you is checking you and saying yeah. you know this isn't me or maybe this there's more for me in life I would yeah. say it's worth paying attention to that right. small little nudge. Yeah, and I give credit to my parents because I think by the way they raised us up, like even with all of my siblings, especially me, like I just sense like even the way they raised us up, as far as we went from like his his feet 
as far as we went from his yeah. presence, we always had that conviction. And we always knew right from wrong, as good as I got doing the wrong things. And so I always give credit, obviously, to God, but also my parents, because they consistently prayed for me and consistently raised yeah. me up to, like, know, like, the Holy Spirit was always within me, whether I realized it or not. Like, I knew, like, yeah. in that moment, like, I'm doing this very well, and I'm thriving in this, yet I feel like this crazy anxiety, this crazy fear. I have no peace in my life yeah. right now at all. And, like, I just knew, like, this isn't where I'm supposed to be, no matter how good that, w that was going for me. And that is the power of prayer. So parents, siblings, anybody yeah. who you have, maybe you have a friend who's not saved or totally living like right. wrong. Yes, be there for them and yes, encourage them. But prayer mm -hmm. is not a last resort. Prayer is a first resort because yeah. it really changes people and it changes situations and it yeah. sticks. Like it's And they don't even have to know you're praying yeah, for them. It's just Like that's how good God <laughs> is. Like he'll literally change their lives through the pro power of your prayer and through his spirit. And like, you don't even have to tell them, hey, I'm praying for you. Because a lot of times it's people you don't want to talk to. It's probably yeah. someone you haven't forgiven. It's probably someone that has hurt you. And you can pray for them and God literally change, literally change their lives. And it's all because of your prayer. Prayer changes things. Write that down. That's a whole sermon. <laughs> That's a whole sermon. <laughs> so good. Well, thanks for sharing yeah. with that what part with us. Of but course. now I have some questions we're going to answer. So I'll throw them out and then we'll both answer them. But first up is a kind of just a chill question. Cool. What are some of your favorite worship groups right Ooh. now or worship teams mm -hmm. and some favorite pastors that you listen to? Um, Well, for starters, definitely Free Chapel Music. FCM and yeah, our merch is that merch is hard. I think that last album, it's been a year and it still sticks. It still goes crazy. But I think um I think of Elevation. I think Elevation, even like both of their groups, Elevation Rhythm just dropped a crazy album. He was very, bragging on this in the car. I, I didn't. Was, <laughs> I said, Bailey, have you heard this? <laughs> <laughs> but I think um their last um Elevation Rhythm album, I think it just connects with this generation really well. Yeah. And um. Their last album named Lion, just oof. If you need, if you need like a little extra pump in the gym, listen to Lion. Okay, it'll get you right. And but then some of too. your favorite speakers that you listen to on Ooh. a consistent basis. Definitely Pastor Jensen. Um, some Sundays, if I get the chance, I'll tap into Orange County to listen to Pastor Ben. <gasps> I put him got, on my list, and I love his accent. Yes, of course, it makes everything better. <laughs> and um, outside of the house, um. I think of Rich Wilkerson. I think if I need like 30 minutes of quick encouragement and yeah. like good handles, he's got great structure. And he has like points that are just like, I take them and I run with it. Yeah. So I think of Rich in DC. DC is also a crazy speaker. She's so prophetic. She's I also so put easily her. Moved by the, she's so easily moved by the spirit. So those two. That's awesome. Well, I put. Bethel. I've mm. been on the Bethel wave my whole entire I life. I just I love that. everything that they do. I think that Miss um, Jen Johnson, I think she, they're incredible at in what they do. Jesus. Oh my, all of them. They're yeah. all, those are just, yeah. and it's something I've grown up with. So I just, yeah, I find sure. like a comfort to their worship. And I love obviously Maverick City. Who doesn't? Yes, yes. Who doesn't? She basic. Stephanie Gretzinger. <laughs> I listened to her. Uh, she has a song called No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. And yeah. I literally like sit and listen to that song and cry because it's, it's so sweet. <laughs> and Influence Music, that's one that's yeah. slept on. I love their... You love to brag on Influence. I do. I love their music. I think their songs are great. And I'm really that. big on lyrics and their lyrics yeah. are super powerful. And then that. for pastors, I put Pastor Franklin. I also put Pastor Ben, uh, Pastor Don Tree. And then I put The Porch Ministries. I don't actually know who... Is the pastor? I probably have sent you guys stuff. That's the one that uh, they have a really good dating series that um, I've listened to a bunch of times. So need those. the Porch Ministries, I think it's out of Texas, but oh, okay. that's a young adult ministry and it's that's cool, incredible. I love that, and it's very just kind of like this vibe of casual and lighthearted, but super deep, but not. I hate this word, but boring. It's it's they keep you don't your lose attention. It. Yeah, it keeps your attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah <I> neither. <laughs> I'm like not boring. Yeah. But no, yeah. So those are just some and then oh, I wanted to ask. What's up? It's a little exposure for both of us. <laughs> what's your favorite it could be B C days or it could be currently. What's your favorite just normal song, like non Christian song that oh, okay. you get like a little ratchet to? 
Probably on the daily. Because <laughs> in the gym, sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll play Lion. And I'm like, all right, on to the next thing. And that'll probably be Pop Smoke. Probably anything Pop Smoke. And it'll give you that little edge. Okay. And if I'm, like, on my sad boy vibes, maybe some Frank. Some Frank Ocean. Oh, I do love Frank Ocean. Yeah. Maybe some Daniel Caesar, some Giveon. Should I keep going? <laughs> 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 she said BC days. <laughs> I've got a do whole Do you have, list. like, a number one hype song, though? Like, if you're, like just need to get hyped that's non-christian it could even be a super throwback if you don't it's okay i can't think of one right now. Ooh, on the come up okay that's i love good. drake anything that's good I, and then i would say fergie i just <laughs> resonate why am i not surprised Fergalicious, <laughs> London Bridge, love all that and also one of my number one hype songs was it's just so Random, like a G six. If I ever am given ox, I love that song. Honestly, that song, that song be hitting. I'd be at volleyball. If that song comes on, like I'm a dominating. G6, I love like it. G six. It just makes BC you want to move. Huh? <laughs> That's no. That one's still current. I love that song. Um, and then the next question, kind of shifting gears a little bit. Yeah. So I can go first on this one. But how did we end up in ministry? And then when did the Jesus have kind of stick for you like it's always been real it's always been a part of your life but when did it become our life so for me I have always wanted to go into ministry I've shared this on a couple podcasts before but um I knew that something was calling me to ministry in some capacity how I specifically kind of dialed in on free chapel college though I did not want to go to Free Chapel College. I grew up at Free Chapel, and I love our leadership, and I loved our church, but I felt as if I needed to get out and kind of spread my wings and fly and do what was uncommon. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had already paid my down payment for school in South Carolina. I don't even know if you knew that, but I was totally going to go to the South Carolina School of Leadership, incredible school. I had a couple mentors who had went there, so that's where I was going to go, and then the Lord was kind of pressing on my heart at Free Chapel College, Free Chapel College. And I said, no, I went there my whole life. I want to go out yeah. elsewhere, whatever, whatever. And then I um, was helping at Forward Conference hosting mm-hmm. tribe stuff. And then I forgot to tell somebody to save me a seat. And I was super bummed because I their whole arena was full. And there right. was literally no, not one seat anywhere. And it was me and my sister, Madison. So didn't have a seat. And it just so happened that the only seats ever were behind the stage at the very top so it was when the stage was against the yeah well it wasn't in the center of the room so very very top row very very back of the room well that night pastor reggie dabs shout out reggie dabs he's incredible he spoke and he um had them it was the (gasps) drop that bag um sermon yeah so he had everyone it was like a really serious and deep moment and he had everybody stand up and come to the front if you had uh, struggle with depression, anxiety. Yeah. And I, since I was in the very, very top row of the back of the stage, I got to see the yeah. Lord worked it out where I could see everyone who came down. Wow. So I'm crying because I'm seeing it from a perspective that no one else in the room can see because yeah. I can see all corners of the yeah. room. So then he says depression, anxiety, and they go down. Well, then he says to go down if you struggle with suicide. And then in that point of the room, it was probably like a third of the room. That came down. And um, in that moment, I was crying and I was so sad. And I thought, oh my gosh, how are this many young people? Because four conferences, middle scores and high scores, if you didn't know that. So I thought to myself, like, how are this many young people wanting to take their lives? Their lives haven't even started yet. They've not even gotten to the place of, you know, where they're going to get married and they're going to, you know, and they're going to step into their career and all this stuff. And um, I was just, sad in that moment and obviously as I should have been and then I just felt this overwhelming sense of peace about myself and I just heard there's only certain times in my life where I've really heard God speak but I heard him say I'm going to use you to lower that number Wow! and I just began to get this like hope and this courage and this boldness about me of like oh my gosh I am here for a reason and I'm here to love on those kids Mm. and they don't have to even like me but I'm going to pray for them and they don't even have to know who I am, but someone out there be- like just needs to believe in these kids and yeah. show them the way in which they can go and that their life matters. And so 
when that happened, the Lord kind of put on my heart that this was the place that he had blessed me and he had shaped me and he had molded me yeah. and encouraged me. So why not go to a place where it has already been such a blessing to me and learn and then get to go yeah. on the flip side. So everything's yeah. full circle now because mm -hmm. I, my life it's was changed sense. at Forward Conference and was changed through Summer Extreme, our kids camp. Yeah. And now I'm on staff for a ministry that helped mold me into yeah. the Full Crazy. circle moment. Full circle. I love that. <laughs> I love that. You shared like a little briefly, but so you were at Forward yeah. Conference too when I you're... was at I was at Forward Conference twenty nineteen. And the thing is, I was out of high school when I went to Forward. So I kinda like finessed my way in. But it was like he the first one. The system. <laughs> it was the first one I had been to, but I just knew I had to be there, especially since my mom was like, You need to go. Yeah. And um I went with my siblings and they were kind of like they were going, but they weren't there, like, yeah. especially mentally. But I was like, I was having an expectation. Like I was ready to hear from God, especially what, whether my next step was this or that. Mm -hmm. And so just um, coming to ministry, that was the place where I just knew, like I had to surround myself with the right circle. And so Free Chapel College that weekend, it just showed me like I had that loneliness. Like, yes, I was with God and I wasn't alone. Yeah. Yet I still had this loneliness. And so coming to Free Chapel College, it was me really just taking the step of having the right circle. That's okay. And still doing the thing that I wanted to do as far as my degree, as far as finishing my bachelor's in business. Wow. And so God was like, check your circle. And I was like, I don't have a circle. He was like, <laughs> exactly. Free Chapel College. That's and so, so I good. took that step. And as far as ministry, like, I came here not wanting to preach. I came here really not even wanting to be a pastor, mm -hmm. not really even knowing what ministry actually was. That was a whole journey in itself, finding out what ministry actually is, yeah. the behind the scenes, what it really takes. And no one in my family is in ministry. Mm -hmm. I've got this um, godfather who is in ministry, and I really don't talk to him. That's really all mm -hmm. I know. And as far as, like, me going down the road, as far as, like, finding out what ministry is and having a burden for people mm -hmm. and wanting to be used by God in a mighty way, like that was between me and God and not having anyone else to kind of have as a blueprint and have as like, how can I do this and go about it the right way? And how do I know I'm called? How do I know like mm, what? That's a real question. Like, how do I know whether I want to like go into ministry, full-time ministry, vocational ministry, or have a career, you know? And, and then still love or, God and serve God. Or do both. How do I balance yeah. both, you know? And so I was at a place of figuring that out and really not having anyone around me to show me that other than the pastors at Free Chapel College. But I, it was at the place where, like, you've got to build those relationships yeah, you don't know them. to have that vulnerability and have that trustworthiness. And so I was at a place of just, like, trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And a year in my first year at Free Chapel College, I just realized, like, you know, my hunger for the word was growing mm -hmm. and my hunger to be in his presence and to see what happens in his presence grew. And I was really at, really at a place of, like, God, I want you to use me here. Wow. And I want you to send me places where there isn't Jesus, where there isn't your presence. And I want you to use me to transform lives, to bring the word in a different way. Yeah. You know, I don't want to lose myself along the way. I want to remain with you and go wherever you take me. And I want you to come with me. But I, don't, I want to be at an authentic and genuine place. And I know, like, God... In multiple occasions, especially in the last year, he sat me down. And he said, like, you've got a calling in a way that you lead that people follow, like, organically. Yeah. And it's in a way where I, like, I don't feel the need to be someone else, where I'm authentic, where I'm where I'm real and I'm genuine. And that's just along the way. It's just been with every yes. Yeah. I don't have the blueprint. I don't have the whole plan, the end goal. There isn't an end goal, really. Like. I don't even want to focus on that. Right now, I'm at the place of, like, with every yes, I just know that it's pleasing God, that I'm obeying him. Yeah. And wherever he wants to take me, that's where I'm willing to go. That's so good. You know? I think that something you talked about that wasn't even anything I was going to talk about is how do you know you're called? Yeah. And that was something I struggled with because I had loved ministry. I wanted to do ministry. I loved coming to church. Church was a safe place for me. But then I started to get this feeling of, oh, well, I do pretty well in school, so should I go and, you know, try to be in the medical field, or should I go and I really loved marine biology, so I was actually thinking about going and doing wow. that, and I want, yeah, I was pretty convinced that I was going to be a marine biologist, like, I loved the ocean, I, I had gone <laughs> and done, like, scuba diving, and was, I don't know, I just thought the ocean would be cool as yeah. my 
place of work yeah. and to get to study the ocean. And I still do love the ocean, but <laughs> it's not in my career. Yeah. So I kind of was second guessing myself and thinking, okay, can I still love God and then go do this? And yes, you absolutely can. You can, you're, everyone's so different and your calling could be to serve at a church, but to not work at a church. And right. that is just as important as working at a church every single day. Seed that matters. Is most churches. Yeah, yeah. We literally, literally. are compiled. If we had no volunteers, we would not have a church. Right. So it's so important. But how I knew specifically that I was called to full time ministry versus just to serve or just to right. attend was I stepped into it, mm-hmm. like you said, and I stepped into it for myself because I could hear about it and I could even learn about it and I could look up typical task or whatever. But when I stepped, when you step, when you're uncertain, and it's only a good thing it's not going to bring you away from god but if it's a good thing and you just sometimes the lord just wants you to step into it and then when i stepped into it i think some people step into it and they think okay i like this but it's not for me when i stepped into it i thought what else would i do this is like the dream this is exactly what i want to do and so if you feel this kind of tug of okay maybe i'm supposed to do maybe it's not ministry maybe you think you're supposed to be a doctor go get an internship at a doctor's office and step into whatever it is and then you can kind of get a feel because you can learn yeah or you can hear about it but it needs to be caught it needs to be i'm in the room and i just i love it when you're in the room you get a feel for it's the great the handle vibe. that says um it's not taught it's caught yeah and really I really heard it um said this way by the great Bishop T D Jakes where he says if it's not the thing then it's the thing that will lead to the thing and mm-hmm. you won't really know until you step into the room yeah until you find out for yourself because there's a lot of places where we we like to think or imagine like wow that would be cool yeah. wow that sounds great and we can get on YouTube and try to find out. You know, what would it look like or what could it be for me? Mm-hmm. But you don't really know it's for you or whether it's your gift, whether you until you step into the room. And if it's you know? feasible for you, if it's if it's within location and it's if you're at a place in your life where it might be hard, but you could do it. Yeah. Do it. This, this is, is your side. <laughs> and this isn't really j- just only about ministry. No, this could it's be whatever. anything. This could be entrepreneurship. This should be. This could be about going into anywhere in the marketplace. Yeah. It's your life, though. Yeah. For real. And it, you've got time. For real. Let's We're talk about, all about doing it. <laughs> you talk about the pressure of feeling like we've got to do it today or, you know, but it's really like when you sit back and realize that I've got time to figure it out, God's going to grace you. Yeah. And to step in into things that like, like I said, if it's not the thing, you're going to learn from it and move on to the next. Yeah. You know. And there's certain things that you'll try and you won't like, and then there's certain things you'll try and you will like. But for yeah. whatever it is, if something has been, don't. You don't have to do every single thing that's ever put on your heart because if I did that, I would yeah. I would have started so many things by now and not finished them well. Right. But if something is consistently pressing on you a little mm-hmm. bit of, okay, maybe I should, maybe I should, and it's for an allotted amount of time, you decide that time, then I think this is your okay to step into it and just see where it goes, whether that's relationship, friendship, job, yeah. You know, occupation, whatever it is. If That's it's an internship, word. just step into it. Yeah. And if it's a good thing and there's going to be growth can come from it, don't go step into something bad. Yeah. But if you know that there could be blessings from it and it's not going to pull yeah. you away from the person you want to be, or if you're a Christian, it's not going to pull you away from God, yeah. step into it. And you don't want to, just to like close it out, you don't want to sit back years from now and be like, I wish I had a, yeah. you know, because it's like, I rather years from now, or like whether I'm old with a gray head, or even if I lose my hair like my dad, <laughs> like I don't want to sit back and be like, wow, I wish I had done that dream. I wish I had done that plan. And God put that vision on my heart, but I didn't step into it. So, like every yes that you have, it doesn't have to be the end result, but it will lead to what God has for you. That's true. And my favorite, sorry, this is the last thing we'll say about this. My favorite quote by Bob Goff, one of them is, Love Bob Goff. Bob Goff, come on my podcast, Shout please. Out Bob. Please come on my podcast. <laughs> Shout out Bob. Everyone tag Bob Goff in this. Yo, no. <laughs> but anyways, one of my favorite quotes by him is no one's remembered for what you almost did. Wow. So I don't want to be somebody who yeah. just almost did all these things and talked about it. At least try it out and then see what happens. And even if it tries and fails, it's still the fact that you cared enough yeah. and you built up enough courage to try. So I love that. So good. Great. That has nothing to do with anything. We're Honestly, gonna talk wherever about wherever <laughs> God takes us is where we're headed right now. <laughs> That's so good, though. Yeah. Um, and then the next thing, I just love this question. And you probably read it and were like, what in the world does she want me to talk Honestly, about? Honestly, I just read these. 
Enoch. I'm just being led by the Spirit. Oh What's my gosh. <laughs> it's what brings you joy on a daily basis? Oof. Joy. I think I wake up in the mornings and I just breathe. And I'm like, I just have this heart of gratitude, which has really changed this year. Yeah. And I think it came, yes, from the word, but like from that song Gratitude by Brandon Lake, where I just sat back and I was like, God, every day of my life, no matter what season I'm in, mm-hmm. I just want to have a heart of thankfulness and gratitude. Yeah. And so I wake up and I literally take the deepest breath and I go on a walk and I just, I appreciate everything that I have, whether it's a healthy family, yeah. whether it's an opportunity to be able to do what I love and be able to grow. But aside from that, I'm very thankful and it brings me joy to just have like a great group of people around me and not just people that like are there but people that help sharpen me yeah and they don't make me dull and it's not even people like I think sometimes we have to check ourselves that we don't have people that in a way help us grow because they compete with us they help us mm-hmm. grow because they help us see us whether that's good or bad that's and good. so they help see what our potential could be what our purpose could be but also check us you know I've got people around me and I also you know give that energy right back where it's like give me all the smoke no yeah you know if i'm in a bad place and i'm doing certain things in my main and we do give you yeah all yeah <laughs> touche <laughs> and it's like you know if i'm having a bad day and it's showing on my face and my attitude is giving out like people are telling me and, and you give enoch a big hug even if he does it what what and he can't help but get a little bit happy because he's yeah. a lover inside so if you yeah. just give him a hug he'll yeah and so like even when I don't want it, that brings me joy. Yeah. Just having people around me that are, like, so, like, loving and yeah. so passionate and just, like, have this drive for life. Like, I love, like, the fact that I get to wake up every day and I go into places and spaces where there are people around me that just want more of God, that want more for themselves, and just yeah. have this passion for life. And I think that just, like, brings energy. That brings, like, drive and ambition. And I think that's from God. That's so good. What brings you joy? Honestly, I feel like anything. You look at the trees and you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> I literally put flowers. No. I bet you did. <laughs> I, um, I have so many things that bring me joy. But I wanted to talk about this because there's so many things that it's really easy to point out what's going wrong in your life and yeah. things that are stealing your joy. But we need to point out things that are going great in our life and For gratitude. Sure. And so I actually start in the morning with a gratitude list, which I've talked about it a lot on here. And I talk about it because it's important. But I list. wake up and I write down three to five things I'm thankful for. And it can be super duper small of like, I'm thankful for pens like that I can write. Yeah. Or I'm thankful that I can have eyesight. I'm thankful that I for have sure. a healthy body i'm thankful for my house i'm thankful for my bed whatever it is my box fan if you know me i'm thankful for my box fan keep that thing on me (laughs) (laughs) i literally take it everywhere but anyway um just (laughs) gratitude is brings me joy because it shifts my perspective um, about life to just these things are ordinary to these things are extraordinary like we really don't know what we have until we focus on what we have so or until you lose it yeah, that's true. We don't want to be there, so let's be you lose thankful. lose your box fan, you're going to lose it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, but I put, like, time with Jesus, time yeah. with friends and family. I put planning, which I know sounds silly, but I love getting out my agenda yeah. and for the week and just seeing what I have for the week and yeah. seeing where I can fill stuff in. I love that. And um, I listen to every day, every single day, Scouts Honor, you know, whatever. I yeah. really do. I listen to the song, Good Day. Mm, of <laughs> and, course you do. And I just got to do my dance and I get hype. And it's I started like, pl- playing it in my practicum when I'm teaching. Yeah. And, and we just, you can't be mad when you listen to that song. Yeah. And so I listened to worship <laughs> music all morning. But then I per- I play the song Good Day. And it just like kind of. And it shifts my, yeah. just makes me a little bit more hype, a little bit Loosens more. You up. That crackhead like energy, life isn't that get deep. ready. Yeah. yeah. And just, I don't know, it gets me excited for if the day. If somebody does get mad during Good Day. I don't know. Yeah, I, what's wrong with you? menace to society. <laughs> there's, a, there's a problem. So good. But yeah, I don't know. I just thought that was a good question. Because yeah. you need to figure out in your life what brings you joy. And then focus on those things and prioritize prioritize yeah. those things. And I think like it's because like just like you said, like we have so many things that are like happening every day that the enemy brings to straight up just suck the joy out, out of our lives. And you feel and wrong sometimes like, to just be a joyful yeah, person. Or yeah. I do, because there's so many things going on yeah. 
in the world and in people's lives. And God literally says in his word, like, my joy is your strength. Like, even in, even in the darkness, even when you feel like you should run from life, and you feel like so many things are coming that the enemy is just bringing to tear you down, like, mm-hmm. my joy is your strength. And even when, like, you're smiling in the storm, and just imagine someone smiling in the storm, like, that's crackhead energy. Yet, they're just, they're who they are. You want to know something, guys? The sweetest thing Enoch ever said to me was two or three weeks ago. You don't probably don't even remember. We were at youth, and he was like, Bailey, you're a whole crackhead, <laughs> but you have a great heart. And I was like, Enoch, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> so I that gave me joy, Enoch. That made me so yeah. happy. Because I get called a crackhead a lot, but I've just kind of accepted it. I have a lot of energy. I have a lot yeah. of things going on in but my head and in my life. It just reflects your heart. Your heart is just like... <laughs> it is. Yeah. But no, yeah, so I thought it'd be fun and just funny and lighthearted. But whatever that. brings you joy, I would say prioritize those things. So if it is your family, if it is your friends, if it is working out, if it is whatever, planning for me, then put aside that time to... Yeah do something that you know is going to bring you joy. Yeah. And then when you're sad, you know what to turn to. Yeah. That's a healthy joy and, and like, a healthy outlet. I would say, like, don't be afraid to have joy. Because I would I would think, like, we're speaking to a lot of people right now that probably go into places that, like, aren't very joyful. Yeah. That probably there is no energy. And yet you feel like it would be weird for me to be the only, be the only like, crackhead. Happy or just, person, like, yeah. have, like, that joy and expectation for life and have that energy. And God's probably like, that could be you. And that the thing with joy is it's, it's contagious. contagious. And it spreads like wildfire. Yeah. And like the moment someone walks into an office space or a workplace and there's just joy, it begins to just spread like wildfire. And it changes yeah. things. And, and if so, you're like a naturally, maybe you're not like a me and Enoch who really prioritize being positive and happy maybe that's not your vibe but i can let you know that even just having a good attitude yeah. gives you a level head you make better yeah. decisions when you're just in a better mood so yeah. we're not saying you have to be like me and get excited about trees and everything yeah. and old people but yeah because in a way i'm not like that no no, no <laughs> you're not but i think that that's my vibe and that's kind of what yeah. i'm about because i like to find happiness in the small things but yeah. i would say that even just praying or speaking to yourself and saying i'm gonna have a good attitude today i love that i'm gonna sure. reflect kindness today and you don't have to be on 10 ah, yeah. but just but definitely show it yeah like just a smile especially like when you're talking to somebody say good morning just like, there you go just like the little things acknowledge people there you go eye contact just the small things <laughs> so good it brings oh. joy that's really good. And then the we have two more questions. So the next yeah. question is, what do you feel is the importance of community? Which you kind of hit on a little bit yeah. about that. But we can just talk if yeah. about this one together because we are in a close friend group. But yeah. the importance of community slash talking to trusted people. So mm. for me, obviously accountability. But more so than accountability, I've been really – this week I kind of had – which you might not even notice, but I kind of had like a weird emotional week. Oh, um, I noticed. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like, uh, for a couple of days. Yeah. And I just had super duper being t- totally transparent with what's basically a family. I had super yeah. bad anxiety attack on Tuesday. Wow. And I like freaked out. I literally called Morgan and I said, wow. can you meet me in my car right now? I'm freaking out, whatever, whatever. And um, if you don't know about anxiety or you've never had anxiety, it feels for me like someone's pushing on my chest and I feel very like stuck and confined and claustrophobic is a good word and overwhelmed. Yeah. And so you don't even know sometimes why it's happening and then you're trying to figure out the root and then you're thinking about it's making it worse. And so it's just kind of a, it's a negative experience all around. Is normally I would just shut off and just try to like, go completely numb to all emotions, all feelings, and just go be by myself. But I've been learning to get more open about, because I am happy, Bailey, and I I don't like to show it. Um, And so I feel like it makes me look like I'm a phony because I'm supposed to be happy all the time and I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. But actually it brings people in. Like, oh my gosh, the happy girl cries. That's crazy. really hard for me because I like to be 
like I said, joyful and happy right. and peaceful. I yeah. don't like to talk about sad things. I don't watch the news because I don't want to know what's going on. <laughs> like, I, I don't, don't want to talk about it. it. I don't even want to talk about In it. In my world, we're all good. Yeah. So, um, anyways, but I kind of had like a weird week. But then every single day, guys, literally every single day, even today, people bought my coffee, which I know is not wow. a huge deal to anybody else. But every single day this week, on Tuesday, Camille brought me coffee. On Wednesday, Haley brought me coffee. On Thursday, Honey brought me coffee. And then yesterday, just listen, I have to show you guys. Sorry, this is just getting into my life. But I, my sister Venmoed me yesterday and was like, let me not put my Venmo because I don't want anybody to <laughs> Venmo me or steal from me or something. <laughs> but she Venmoed me and said $10 for uh a coffee on me to take care of you. I love you and I'm so proud of you. Wow. And so it was so weird because these days that I felt like so small and like I was kind of going through the motions per se. Yeah. Um, and I didn't even know why I was kind of feeling heavy or feeling anxious. It was every single day, these little pockets of sunshine and these little winks. Yeah. Hey, Ty. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the interruption. Call. I hung up on Ty on accident. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but every single day, God was showing me these small little pockets of sunshine that were just making me yeah. happy. And my friends and my community, this past week even, God showed me through all of that, that he cares about me. And yeah. he cares that even through prayer, he's showing me he loves me, but through my people, he's showing me he loves yeah. me. And I even this week learned that I don't want to just be friends with people who I have fun with, are friends with good people. I want to be friends with people who love me for right. me. And me is happy, fun, charismatic. Yeah. But me, Bailey, is also emotional and yeah. whatever. And so I think that when it comes to community and the importance of it, it's having the freedom to be yourself unapologetically. Yeah. And you need that space. Yeah. You need people around you who let you do that because that's where you flourish is yeah. in your full authentic self. Yeah. And when you... It's where you don't feel the need to perform yeah. or to be someone you're not. And so when you find yourself in that group where you feel like I can be authentic and I can be genuine and they won't be surprised when they hear about like my broken areas yeah. or when I have a dark day. It doesn't day. scare them. Yeah. And they're not surprised by it. And they're like, yeah, I feel that <laughs> and I get it. And then like they don't just stay there. They're like, let's go play volleyball. You know, let's hit the gym. Let's go get coffee. Let's go just read the word at a coffee shop and just like, you know. Make it simple. Yeah. And so, like I said, like, when you find yourself in that circle where you're sharpening each other and not even, like, in a negative way as far as, like, they're just, like, riding your tail. Yeah, don't like, be toxic. Like, bro, be better. <laughs> you're trash. Like, like I find myself sometimes. You guys used to do that. As bros, sometimes you find yourself, like, talking to your guys like that. In the like gym, that. it's okay. But in life, yeah. it's not, right? In life, is just draining. And I found myself having that conviction myself where it's, like, you know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And yeah. then the way you speak to your friends is, is a reflection of how you speak to yourself. That's and good. so, like, when you're speaking to your friends in the way of just, like, just straight motivation, but it's kind of negative, it doesn't inspire and it doesn't push them to want to, like, you know, have joy or mm -hmm. have peace. And so I think just having that circle where you're just, like, at a place of vulnerability. Free to be you. Free to be you. And you're just, like... You're peaceful, and you're just like, you're okay to have a bad day if you have it, but it's not okay to stay there, and they get that. Yeah. And I think just like, I think having a circle where you're able to check it as well and have open conversations where you're just like not having phoniness, and like even yeah. if you do have a problem with somebody, you'll actually grow through confronting it rather than just staying there and being stuck in this place of just like a gray area and like you're really at, really at a point at a point of competing rather mm -hmm. than just growing together. Yeah. And I would say too, I don't want to ever make it seem as if anything in my life is perfect and don't think our friend group any of my friends are perfect because we're not. We <laughs> everybody has problems and yeah. everyone can get annoyed or frustrated or mm -hmm. let somebody down in one way yeah. or another. But I will say that when you are kind of deciding if someone is going to be in your inner circle or not, I would ask yourself a couple of questions. I'm big about questions. Yeah. I would ask yourself, are they adding more good into my life than yeah. bad? One, because they're going to annoy you sometimes and bring value? out some negative yeah. emotions. But are they adding significantly more good than bad into your life? Are they challenging you in a positive way, in yeah. a constructive way that's calling you higher right. without pushing you down? Yeah. And do they... Um, also, just like on a more basic level, do they care about you enough 
to not accept your just I'm okay answer, but really to that that one to check that on one. you. And there's more things. Obviously, you could, do you guys have fun together? Are you, they trustworthy? Yeah. But a couple just mentally ask yourself these questions. If you're deciding, is this person good for me as a friend or not? Or are they yeah. more of acquaintances? I think check those things and ask yourself, like, are they adding value to my life? They're adding more good than bad. Are they checking on me? Do they really yeah. care about me? Are they supporting me? And are they encouraging me? And if they're doing those things, because I wrote down in my notes a long time ago that love, even friendship, love, relational love, it's going to go through trials like it's normal. And but if they, you don't, it's probably not love. Yeah, it's probably someone's being fake. <laughs> if you're not butting heads sometimes, I would say, like, there's a lack of authenticity and transparency. Yeah. I don't think it should be all the time because that's not my vibe. I yeah. wouldn't be friends with somebody if we got mad at each other all the time. Yeah, but it's okay suck. to agree to disagree yeah. sometimes and be like, you know what? We're not seeing eye to eye on this, but I love you anyways. Yeah. Even if it's about Chipotle. Whatever. Yeah. Like, I don't want Chipotle. You want it? You can go to Chipotle. I'm not. Yeah, like, don't cool. be a pushover. Just yeah. like, you know what, bro? We'll just be back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just we'll do our own thing. But yeah. no, I think that I wrote down, though, that it, love goes through trials, but it comes out better. I love that. And yeah. so if it's going through trials all the time, but it's coming out the same, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to tell crickets, you what crickets. to do, but in relationships and friendships, <laughs> if it's always going through trials, love's supposed to grow, heal, protect. Yeah. And so if it's that. not growing through trials, it's just going through them. I would just say, check yeah. yourself, check the person and figure out why that is. Yeah. And that's on that period. Period. So the next that. thing, I love this question, Enoch. I am so excited. Is what are some icks that you have with girls? Like funny, don't be, don't, you know, throw shade, but just funny <laughs> icks that you have or relationally, like couples that sit on the same side. That's an ick for me, major ick. I don't know. It wouldn't be that deep for me. But um, I've got to be inspired by this question. Do okay, you go I'll first? go first. Go first. So I have a lot. I think well, bad <laughs> hygiene, ick. For uh, sure. Gross. Yeah, I think that's a given. Yeah. Um, trying to be, I don't know, like, the right way to word this, but girls don't know what I'm talking about. When a guy's, like, trying to be suave, but he's not, yeah. that's an ick. Like, if you're trying too hard to be suave and yeah. it's not just it's natural. It's not who you are. Yeah, then it's I icking it. me out. I don't know if yeah. that makes sense, but... When a guy says something, trying to be, like, quick with it, and you're like, Ew, that ain't like, you. That ain't it. <laughs> and um, I put guys that, oh, my gosh, this is this is a huge one. If you talk about money, mm -hmm. like, that you got it like that, and you're being serious, it's okay to joke, whatever. But if you're just constantly talking about your money, eh, boo. Yeah. Um, I put guys that use he-he because... He he. <laughs> like in text, like they'll who be like, he he. Who says he he? <laughs> like H E H E. We people, want a name drop. No, people <laughs> do that. Name. I swear. And it's so weird. That's disgusting. Um, <laughs> baby voice. I cannot oh, with the yeah. couples that are like, you're like yeah. my little friend. Unless it's 4 a.m. and you're both on crackhead energy. Otherwise. Unless it's what? Nothing. Let's move on. You're weird. I don't know. Enoch uses baby voice, everybody. I do Expose not. That's not him. what I said. That's not what I said. Um, I put guys that wear skinny jeans with splatter paint on them. I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> what are we, 2009? I was just thinking about it. And my big one, if you could, like, zoom in on this, I swear, it's the where's my hug guy. Ah, uh, those guys. <laughs> like, where are you going? Come here. <laughs> that's funny. They're like, hey, okay. where's my hug? Okay. Like, I'm like, ew, get I away I see where you're going now. Um, for me, I would definitely say they have to have, like, a clean environment. Like, they don't have to be, like, these, like... <laughs> My car's not clean. Yeah. Do I no, you your out? car's pretty clean. <laughs> but if, like, if, like, their natural, like, in a way, natural habitat and environment is just, like, dirty and they're okay with that, and they, like, don't realize that it's dirty, that's a big red flag for me. Not like, even red flag. I'm talking about icks. Like, what about, like, pick me girls? Is that an ick for you? Probably. Like, they want the attention. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely it. Um, what else would it be? I don't know. I just maybe girls have more ex. I have more. I had. I mean, this is just like off the dome. You could do couple cu couples couples ex couples ex matching shirts. Clinging his in and hers. If you're married and you want to vibe together, that's cool. But if it's like mine and his, yeah, or whatever, that's like gross yeah. to me. 
people that be like having accounts that say like forever and always i honestly am not cool with a lot of pda i think that icks me out if you're making out in a public setting i agree i agree zoom in on this boo what else could there be um Um, i don't like a lot of pet names we talked about this though yeah not about it I wouldn't mind unless it's if like a guy ever it needs to be like original. If a guy ever genuinely, I can't even say it. <laughs> looks say at it. me and calls me like princess or something. Okay, no. I will actually throw. Up I would on only spot. justify it if it's like an original, like that came out of a funny situation. I'm getting you know sick thinking mean? about it because I don't give know. us some pet names that like make you like. Bleh. Princess. Okay. Um, baby girl. Mm. <laughs> Because my papa calls me that. So oh then I just God. think of my grandpa. Not grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> and papa's too pure for me to think about <laughs> like that. Um, really all of them. I don't like baby because my dad calls me baby. Yeah. I don't like anything besides Bailey. And Bay. And Bay. Yeah. And occasionally if we're super, super in love, dating, you might can call me beautiful. Like, you don't like hey, beautiful? beautiful? But not just... All the time. Like, come here, beautiful. Yeah. That's just, like, a little much for I understand. Me. I understand. It feels forced. Yeah. But those are some aches. I just thought that was funny because I have a lot, and you guys probably have a lot, too, but. Yeah. Everyone, it's one of those you got to sit back and think about it. Oh, I wrote mine down. I, bram, 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 off the top. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. If you're, this is, like, kind of funny because I'm a Christian and I have a TikTok, but Christian TikToker, a little bit of an ick for me. Yeah. The like, general, stop right there. Stop right there. <laughs> I want to pray for you one minute. No, it is. I just want to encourage you that, it that is, God has Stop, you. stop. It is their ministry, and it does have weight to it, it, but it kind of sometimes come off a little corny. But we love you. No, and we're stop so, right there. Stop right there. Don't scroll yet. Yeah, I think it's just kind of like <laughs> just share your heart in a normal way. Don't make it so weird, but Yeah, do there's your some thing. people that get original with it, and it catches my attention. Yeah, I think I have Christian TikTokers that I love, but. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm like, okay. The standard ones that wear like the Bass Pro hat, and they just, <laughs> ladies. I need to tell you about the word of God. I'm like, all right. God has is, a word for you. You're just getting, God you're getting has a, a little for you. you're my weird wife. for me. You're my <laughs> wife. God the passion TikToks were so funny, though. Yeah, I just couldn't. I love it. Um, the next question, <laughs> which is, is the second to last question, because in what well, in Sunday. Okay. But how are you preparing yourself? Slash, how do people prepare themselves? How Maybe they're younger, maybe they're older, to be the one. Because everyone always talks about, how do they know somebody else is the one? But yeah. how do you prepare yourself to be the one in relationships and for a future marriage? I think for me, in a way, it's like reverse. You ask yourself, like, what you want in a person. Mm-hmm. And, like, for me, that's, like, God-fearing. That's me. For me, it's, like, you know, they prioritize purity. And they are passionate about their callings. And they yeah. want to be used by God. And it's, like, this whole list, you look at it, and it's, like, okay, this is what I want in a wife. And for me... I look at it and be like, okay, I need to be that. Yeah. And I'm going to attract what I am because in a way God is going to give you exactly like what you're worthy is as far as like what you've like prepared yourself for and what you're able to sustain. And so like I'll just prepare myself in the past couple of months. Like I'm not in a place of like wanting anything Mm -hmm. or even pursuing anything or striving anything. Mm -hmm. I'm at a place of like, God, I want you to do a work in me right now. That is completely going to transform me, and I want to be a different person in six months from now. That's good. And I heard it. I don't know who said this. It's got to be someone from the college, maybe Pastor Blake, maybe Pastor Cody when he got here, um, where they said, run as fast as you can towards God and occasionally look up and see who's catching up with you. Yeah. And I've just been at that place where I'm just, like, sprinting to be used by God and to have these moments with God that are just so tangible and real and that are, are changing me. Yesterday I, t- I talked about the presence of God and how crazy that the power of his presence just changes everything. Yeah. And for me, that's what the last six months has been. It's been running after him, running after the Father, and just being with him. And occasionally, if I look up at someone's catching up, and I'm like, I introduce myself, you know? And so that's just where I'm at. If they fine, they fine. If she fine, <laughs> she fine. <laughs> like, they're like... They're like, you know, like, what's your type? If she fine, she fine. You're <laughs> so silly. <laughs> all jokes aside, no, that's so good. I, I was listening to everything you said, but I just thought about how y'all always say that. <laughs> um, for me, I put mentally, I didn't actually write this one down, but when I thought about it, I 
kind of what you're saying, you, I think that you attract the soul that you carry. So you mm-hmm. want to be equally yoked and kind of in right. similar places. Literally. But I think about all the things I want to bring into marriage. But I've also equally, which this one's a little harder, been thinking about what I don't want to bring into my marriage. Mm. So I like that. Yeah. So you have to think about where you are and self-assess yourself and say, okay, right now, am I at a place where I would be in a relationship and I would be, if I never changed, would I be okay with the person I would be in that relationship? And that's really good. And if I feel as if I am, then which I do feel like I could step into a relationship, then cool. If I don't, Cool still, but there's some room for growth and room for improvement. Right. And you don't have to be perfect to date somebody, but are you okay? If Think about if you were the guy, would you be okay with dating me, with how I am emotionally, right. spiritually mm-hmm. right now? Am I in a healthy place, not a right. perfect place, because we're not striving for perfection. It's never going to happen. But we're striving for health, and if right. there's health, there. And so for me, um, like I said, just figuring out, okay, these are the things I want to bring in. These are the things I'm doing really well out. But what are some things I want to fix before I'm with the person that God has for me? Yeah. And um, that's kind of hard because you have to mm-hmm. go back to the places that wound you and the person's person. You've got to confront some things. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's a lot. And I think that's probably the reason I was so anxious this yeah. week was because I've been taking myself back to these places. and um, But you have to take a step back in order to take a step forward. Right. So just because you're over something, whether it was like family trauma, relationship trauma, real life, like you I got in a that. car accident, whatever it is, if you're over it, that's cool. But did you deal with it? Wow. So baggage is baggage when I like left the place that I was, but I took a suitcase with me. We want to send that suitcase back with no return address and go, you know what? This thing hurt me. This person hurt me and made me feel like this and get honest with yourself and say it made me feel insecure. It Mm -hmm. made me feel confused. It made me feel lost. It made me feel unworthy and get honest with yourself and get honest with God for your healing and then send it back and say, you know what? This is how I felt in that moment. This is where I'm at now, and I don't ever want to feel like yeah. that again. So I know I'm not going to be perfect, but I'm not going to fight the same giants I fought in my That's past. Really good. And I'm going to send it back. I'm going to deal with it. So if you have to deal with that through conversations, yeah. maybe you have to go talk to that person. I don't know what it looks like for you. That's so good. But I even took it a step further and was like, you know what? I'm actually going to go to some counseling and yeah. talk about this and get the right help so that I can be the best me that I can be for yeah. my future, but also for my future person. I love that. I think, I don't know if you've realized, but like a weird theme of this whole conversation has been like around authenticity and being genuine Yeah. and like becoming the person that you want to be. And I think when we're talking on this subject, like we have to look at it the way as like God can't heal the person you pretend to be. He can only heal who you really are. Yeah. And that means even the dark places that you are, that you have, the broken places, the things that we try so hard to just, like, try to cover with joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. And then, like, they're still there. And yet they catch up to us when we, like, step into a relationship or we step into certain places as far as career and callings. Yeah. And so we go and we try to be this person that we're not. We're asking God to heal heal us. And yet he can't heal what we're trying to be. That's good. And so, like, when we're talking about, like, relationships and, like, you know, having to confront certain things, whether it's commitment issues, whether someone hurt you, whether you feel like you're not worthy of a relationship or being able to love someone or be loved, and God, we're asking him to heal us, like, God's like, all right, confront it. And I think that's the hardest part Mm -hmm. is confronting and looking in the mirror and saying, this is what I've been through, and it's hard to face it, but, God, I'm ready for you to heal it, so I'm giving it to you. Yeah, and I think it's important to know that we're all, I literally just posted a long Instagram post about this, but <clears throat> we're all just trying our best. Yeah. And we're all, some people aren't even trying their best. We're all just trying. <laughs> yeah. We're just trying to yeah. get through life and we're figuring it out yeah. as we go. And that's okay. And you have the freedom to say to yourself, I'm not in the best mental state right now, but I'm going to work on it and I'm going to get better. And that's okay. And yeah. it's all right to have problems you don't. Please, please, please don't think, don't let the enemy tell you that you're not worthy of relationship because that's not true. You're just not in a place right now to receive it the way that God intends for you to receive it. The best, the best form of self-love is honesty with yourself, is looking at yourself and saying, as much as I want this relationship right now, as much as I want to like have someone in a way, you know, whether it's physical touch for you or have words of affirmation, like the best form of self-love is saying, I am not ready for that. Yeah. And God, I need you 
to in a way develop me before I have that. That way I don't waste it when I have it. That way I can sustain it. That way I'm prepared for it. Yeah. And something that I've been harping on, and then I'll ask you your final question and we'll close out, yeah. is that really, really this whole theme of the past month for me has been that Christ is made perfect in my weakness. Wow. But in order for him to be made perfect in my weakness, I had to assess what are my weaknesses. That's really And what good. are the areas that I need him to come into and that I need him to perfect. So good. And what we don't give him, he is not going to go behind our backs and take out of our yeah. mind and out of our hearts. So for me, I'm like, all right, God, I'm anxious. Take this from me. And you have to believe. With The faith is believing. So you have to believe and have the faith to say and really Truly, even though it's hard and even though it doesn't make sense in your natural brain, believe in the spiritual realm that yeah. God really can take it. And he really can. I promise he's a one-stop mm-hmm. shop God. You don't have to go and ask for healing from your anxiety and healing from your addiction in two different scenarios. Mm-hmm. You can ask for complete healing in all areas in one area. But God is made perfect in your weakness. He's not scared of your weakness. He doesn't make you less than. He uses weakness. And if you don't believe that, go read any story in the Bible. And if anything, literally looking at the Bible, like a lot of their weaknesses was their calling. No, it is. He's attracted to your weakness and he wants to. That's where his glory comes in. If you're already really great in everything and he uses you in something you're really great in, cool. But he gets the honor because we know that I know that I get to pray for people that have anxiety. And I think that it makes me less than because I'm like, oh, they don't know I'm struggling with anxiety. And God's like, no, Bailey. That's where the power is. You're praying over someone with anxiety while operating in anxiety. That's me. That's only <laughs> yeah, me. That's anointing. And that is that what, is that's where the power comes in. So he's yeah. attracted to your weakness and he's attracted to your authenticity. So reveal your weakness to God and reveal it to trusted people and get healing in that exact thing. And I promise you, I promise you that it's a process. It's not going to be easy. It's yeah. going to be a, uncomfortable at times but what you don't reveal he can't heal so reveal it to him so he can heal it and then your the fullness of life comes in and then other things come up you reveal it he heals it we're getting bandaged as we go but so he heals yes and he loves you and literally whoever's listening to this if you're struggling with something yeah i always tell myself if there's breath in my lungs, God's not done. So if there's breath in your lungs right now, which there is because you're listening to this, God's not done with you. And if he's not done, that means you're healing, your restoration, your person, your calling, your job, your financial, whatever you need, it's on the way because he's not done. So just wait a little bit longer and give yourself grace in this waiting period. That's good. That wasn't what we were going to talk about, but whoever needed that, there you are. That was for somebody. (laughs) Yes. And then the last question, Enoch, is we're wrapping up. What would you tell 16-year-old Enoch in just a couple of sentences? If you could go back and tell yourself something, what would you tell yourself? Um, dang. I know. That one's deep. It hits. (laughs) Um, I would probably say talk to your parents more. Mm. Talk to who, talk to whoever actually cares. Wow. And ask them questions about who you are and who you've been. And I wish at 16 I would have told myself, like, you know, who are you? And, like, what do you want out of life? That's so good. And, like, I would have self-reflected to be, like, is it success that I want? Is it to feel appreciated or respected as a man? Is it to have all the money in the world and have all the fame and, or notoriety? I think at 16 I wish I would have looked back and been, like, you know, this is who I am, so therefore these are my passions, these are mm-hmm. my ambitions, this is what inspires me. And I wish I would have just, like, tapped into God's presence more. And I know, like, at 16, it's hard to, like, know that God is real because yeah. you haven't gone through much. Or if you have, like, you feel like God's not there for you. And so, like, at 16, like, in a way, I wish I would have just, like, tapped into God's presence more to know that he is real and that he's yeah. with me and that he's for me. And like Joshua 1 5 says, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. And I wish like, you know, five, six years ago, I would have known that to actually like, Mm -hmm. I would have, you know, I look back and I'm like, wow, I could have been farther down the road. But really, I could have known God more. And I think that's what I would have wanted most. So good. Aw. Well, guys, this was so good. I'll just end with like a little thought to leave you with because I always try to end it with some type of thought, food for thought. But, um... I would just say I obviously love reflection. I love asking yourself questions. And like Enoch said, asking yourself, who are you? Who do you want to be? But also just ponder on things and don't rush through things. When you're thinking about big decisions or you're, you know, praying about something, it's okay to sit and think in it for a while and to just give yourself the space and the freedom that 
you're human and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to drop the ball sometimes, but just give yourself enough time um, and ponder on things and just think on things and reflect on things and then you'll continuously grow. And sometimes grow might look like you cut off a little bit of people or growth might look like you went down a little bit, you shrunk, maybe shriveled up a little, (laughs) you got got hurt or some rain came and it messed you up, but growth is just continual. So even when you fall down a little bit or something bad happens or a storm happens in your life, just continuously keep Love trying that. and keep getting back up and just ponder and think on some That's things, so meditate good. on some things, guys. But uh, I love y'all. Love y'all. Thanks for listening. Thank you for um, me. Enoch, this was awesome. you were awesome. This felt so natural. And yeah. I feel like y'all were in the room, which is the goal that we're just all hanging out, like having live conversations. Audience. Yes, <laughs> iCarly. <We're just, laughs> welcome to iCarly. No, but thank you guys so much. Love I pray it. that everyone has a good week. Please share this with somebody who could use it. Um, and subscribe. Subs- like, subscribe, all that good Do stuff. All like things. for like. Uh, <laughs> no, but we love y'all, and I pray that everyone has a good week. I pray that you know that you matter, and if you need anything, reach out to me. If Enoch can clear anything up for you that he said, reach out love to him. Y'all. I always make everyone available. Sorry, guys. But no, DM him, Enoch Rosario. DM him on Instagram. Talk to him. Um, and uh, I believe in you you're awesome and remember to look for the good in things and if there is none to become the good in things bye love that